one uh, topic that I that I want to hit first, just because it went super viral, like went uh, transcended sneaker Twitter, was the the controversy around the Nike Fly Ease. So for those that aren't familiar, the uh, Nike Fly Ease it's a, it's a shoe that is essentially it is outfitted and um, uh, really efficient for d people with disabilities, disabled people. It, it, more or less, when you look at the shoe, it's kind of like when when your foot's not in it it's almost like a uh stands up like a triangle and then you slip your foot into it and it like locks into place and locks its form in around your foot when you put your foot in so it, it's yeah. a it's cool tech i mean it's a it's a cool looking shoe um but the the problem is that nike made them limited what was it uh 1600 pairs or something yeah it was i think i saw that number yeah it was like yeah so ridiculous nike made them super limited and they did them via exclusive access uh, via, via I don't sneakers. remember that drop. Was it, I, okay, I think there was some exclusive. I don't think access it was exclusive access. Too. I thought it was on desktop, honestly. Okay, yeah, you're definitely right. For some reason, I thought they also did an exclusive access, which would be like super fucked no, up. No, they, they or super messed yeah. up. But yeah, it. Um, so more or less, what ended up happening was uh, the shoes were made very limited, and they ended up reselling because the demand outweighed the supply. And there's, you know, there, there's profit to be made on them. I don't really know of anyone that that ended up actually getting any. I saw zero like people posting. Yeah, people they weren't. And it's like in a our corny. Industry. Exactly, and it would be a corny thing to like flex success on, anyways, yeah. especially now. Um, however, resellers are being dragged and and flamed and and uh, com com blamed for the entire. The entire situation, even though it wasn't really like, I mean, we're, we're, we have firsthand sight, in, like insight into this industry and the cook groups and people weren't going for these like that. So to see resellers go like, you know, I saw this one TikTok in particular, it, it got, it, blew, it absolutely blew up. Just talking about how evil resellers were and resellers are going to hell if they, if they're reselling these and more or less, I I mean, obviously, you 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 don't want to resell anything that would be considered immoral. But this this is a Nike issue. Like, let's bring bring the blame back to Nike ev on something like this every time. Yeah, seriously, we because there's there's a lot of issues. Um, you know, sock jig. I'm sure you're familiar yeah. with sock jig. So he pointed out months ago, back in like February, when Nike first uh, like started teasing this model, he actually pointed out he was like. Nowhere in this ad campaign is the word disability mentioned. Nowhere. And and he pointed that out months and months wow. back. And it, hmm. what he pointed out what his theory was, which I which I tend to agree yeah, with. I wonder why. Well, it's or it's he thinks. Because from a marketing perspective, if Nike marketed them as like a shoe for disabled people or people with disabilities specifically, um, or namely, his theory is that the the sales and demand would not cross over well to, you know, non-disabled yeah. consumers, right? Because yeah. eventually, in theory, Nike's going to want to pump out a bunch of these more than likely. Um so yeah, that basically from the very beginning when these shoes hmm. first, yeah, pictures, images, and, and the ad campaign first started, they never actually marketed these directly for um, disabled people. They they used all types of verbiage to to like skirt around to that. Stay away from it almost. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, that's why we made sixteen hundred pairs. Right. They're not actually for disabled people. They're just yeah, exactly. They just happen to be great for disabled people. Yeah. It, it's a Nike problem. Why would they do that? It's so ridiculous. It's crazy. I know. Yeah. It's such a bummer, man. Because it, I, well, what they have successfully done. Well, I'll, I'll, let me answer to why they did that, why I think they did that. It's because now these shoes are viral. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like these shoes, to think about it, man, these shoes were not viral when they first released images and some specs on them a couple months back. Now that it, there's this con N Nike loves marketing via controversy. You know what I mean? It's just an ugly truth. Yeah. So did they know what was going to happen to this degree? Could they have predicted the virality of this? Maybe not. But the controversy sure has people talking about these shoes. I, I and so when they do mass produce these shoes, you better bet you better believe that anyone out there that is disabled or not able bodied fully that wants that wants these and is upset now because they have been made aware of how limited they were and that they're reselling, whenever they do GR these, 
they're all going to buy them. Yeah. You know, they're going to be they're going to be sold out uh, or sold probably in much more volume than they would have if just uh, if they gr them from the very beginning. Resellers are the fall guy. Resellers are always the fall guy for Nike. Well, they have some. Yeah, they have somebody as their fall guy. Nike loves to blame resellers for stuff. It's 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 actually pretty frustrating sometimes. Well, who did they blame on the the Satan shoes? Mm, not resellers. No. <laughs> well, they blame mischief. They just find they a just, good. They just find a good way to yeah to push blame somewhere else. Well, um, any controversy, whether it should be or not, it's 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 pretty ugly. I I saw a tweet uh, last week. It was like, <laughs> what it say? It was like, Nike funds the resell game like the CIA funded like like all, all of these illegal uh, yeah. initiatives. Yeah. yeah. So, but then they'll blame resellers and they'll act huh. like they're on the consumer side. One big thing, Nike's whole direct to consumer model that they that they announced officially a year ago that they're going to be pushing for, yeah. just getting more, basically cutting out the middlemen's, cutting out the mom and pops resell or not resell, but sneaker stores, even Foot Locker getting less allocation, and then mm -hmm. Nike just selling direct to consumer. They 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 say that they're doing it to curb resellers and to curb reselling, but that's just simply not true. The, the truth of the matter is that these contracts, like these stores, when they get stock from Nike, they're getting it for like um, like a dealer price. So it'd be, you know, maybe 80 bucks for a pair of Jordan 1s or 90 yeah. bucks for a pair of Jordan 1s. Nike going direct to consumer with this stuff is just going to inflate their profit margins and, and help them and help their yeah. bottom dollar of the hurt business. Those small businesses. It's going to hurt. It's lot. going to squeeze the small businesses, yeah. and they're doing it. There, there was an article I saw last week. Um, it said like partner shops could face supply curtailment in efforts of Nike, uh, trying to stop resellers or prevent reselling. Hmm. So again, what is that? It, that's Nike squeezing their business partners, their small businesses that that. Uh, uh, carry their products nike putting the squeeze on them and under blaming resellers that's their reasoning yeah. and, and logic behind it is that they're just essentially putting it all on resellers hey we want to stop them sorry guys uh you're you're letting too many pairs get eaten up by resellers so now we're just going to release them all via sneakers app um do you think that that could ever happen with like in the card market like panini somebody saying like hey we don't want to give this product to possibly Target and walmart because we can we'll say like you guys are causing all these issues in store yeah we're gonna start distributing them ourselves well it uh let's let's circle back to that because i i do believe that I, it's it's kind of sinister man these brick and mortar stores like really help elevate Nike's brand and brand awareness mm -hmm. and everything else like that. And now we're in a day and age where brick and mortar shoe stores just don't really have a competitive edge yeah. versus online shopping. The only real edge they have is hyped shoes and limited sneakers and, you know, maybe finding a gem. Mm -hmm. But so for Nike to curb the supply on, on, on these mom and pops, it, uh, I mean, you're kind of like leaving them out to dry. A, a little bit. I mean, what are, what are these stores going to do without hype Nike products, dude? You yeah. know, drop Yeezy 700 V3s like every now and again. I uh, I don't know. It's it's an ugly thing. And in my opinion, it's just more uh, sh of Nike shifting blame onto resellers and, and continuing to pursue their own ventures. The sneakers app's been trending a lot recently too, man. People are so sick of like taking L's on the sneakers app, but nothing's going to, nothing's going to change. People keep entering. Yeah. They, you know, they give out enough wins with enough frequency to keep people addicted and keep people coming. Yeah. You start winning a couple of them and then it's like six months you don't win any and then you win again. Yep. Exactly.